All right, today we're gonna to be talking all about NAS drives. NAS drives, they stand for Network Attached Storage. Now you may have one of these external USB drives and you might have a stack of them with all of your data on it. Well, a NAS drive, it allows you to work on and store all of your data. And instead of having a stack of all these different drives, you can actually fill up the NAS drive with lots of different hard drives. And the cool thing about having a NAS drive is that it's intelligent. So you can do extra operations. For example, I have mine automatically back up all of my data onto the cloud. You can back it up onto Amazon, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, all these kind of like services. So it's an extra way to protect your data. The great thing about this NAS drive, which I'll be showing in this video, is that it has a fundable free capability, which means you can directly connect it to your Mac and you have access to the raw speed of this thing. And I'm telling you, it is fast. About a minute to transfer 35 gigabytes. I've been uh, suffering for the last two years with one of those Atom-based slow NAS drives, and it was painfully slow. Just going through a directory would take forever. As you can see, it takes quite a while just to get something on the screen. Trying to load the folder. It takes forever, basically. Using this guy was a, a breath of fresh air. Everything just worked out of the box. And uh, the formants, I'm just gonna jump into that. It was a, uh, I can't understand it actually. I've just, I, I was using a, an SSD and I had a really old 5,000 RPM drive and I was getting read speeds of 800 megabytes a second according to Blackmagic speed test. Yeah, so it goes pretty fast. So it's 150 MBS but it does shoot up to 250 to start off with. Reading is just insane, 870. That's, I don't know how it's doing that, but that is. Uh... And on this guy, I was getting 500 megabytes read and write speed. I remember both these drives are encrypted. So it's a really good performance. So performance with that Thunderbolt cable is uh, it's delightful. So previously, the cheapest four bay Thunderbolt 3 NAS drive you can get was around 950 pounds. This guy is around 1,050. That's only 10% more expensive. But with this guy, you get an eighth generation Intel processor. Previously, you had one of those older 2016 Celeron J processors. The eighth gen, of course, they have HEBC encoding, decoding, they got better UHD graphics. So it's a, a really sweet deal. The price hasn't increased by much to support these new features. And what's even better, as part of these X72 series, you get a six bay and an eight bay. And previously, if you wanted an eight bay or more, you'd have to get a TVS 1282T3, and that guy had a seventh generation Intel processor. Now, the new 8-bay you get as part of this series, it is an 8th generation 6-core processor. Yes, my friends, 6 cores. This is like MacBook Pro level performance. And the best thing of all is a third of the price. I'm going to get one. I'm going to have to get one. But for today, I'm going to be showing you what you get with the 472 XT. My friends, today we have one of the most anticipated unboxings for me in the history of this year. And this is a QNAP NAS drive. This NAS drive has a fundable free and the latest Intel processors. So you'll be able to have support for H.265 decoding, encoding, fast speed and all that stuff. So here it is. This is the box right there. It says it. TVS 472XT. This has got a Pentium Gold processor, two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Welcome, thank you for choosing QNAP. We hope you enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed creating it. And these are the links, start.qnap.com. A kettle plug for the device. It's for Australia, this one, but I guess you'll get your specific countries version. You get an accessories box and you've got the installation guide and the warranty as well as some screws for your drives this is an ethernet cable it says right here it's category C6A you get another ethernet cable and another one so that's the accessories box Look at that beauty. Oh man, I've been waiting for this for such a long time. There you go, look at that beauty. Beautiful. And 
from the back, this is what you get. Two Thunderbolt free connections, and you got your Ethernet, 10 GBE over there, HDMI output, a Kensington lock slot, another Ethernet, two of them, you got USB, and you got a big gigantic fan. So I just wanted to show you what the insides look like. There you go, look at that. Goodness. So the most important thing to remember is what is not in the box and you don't get a Thunderbolt 3 cable and you don't get any hard drives so you need to source those yourselves. I personally have got four 14 terabyte Iron Wolf and Iron Wolf Pro drives on order. I'll be giving you a comparison on how that works and I'll be going into the different RAID configurations you can set up with one of these drives in a follow up video so stay tuned for that. But first, I want to talk about Thunderbolt 3. Now, I did not have a Thunderbolt 3 cable laying around, but luckily enough, I found a USB-C cable that actually worked as a Thunderbolt 3. I tested several USB-C cables and none of them worked as Thunderbolt, but this one did for some reason. It doesn't have a Thunderbolt sticker on it, so I got lucky. Now, I do also have a two meter Thunderbolt 3 cable on order, and I'll feature that in a follow-up video with the RAID configurations. And the reason why you'd want a longer cable is that these NAS drives, they can be a bit noisy. Right, so this is how it's sounding with just an SSD plugged in. Now I'm going to insert a normal hard drive and see how noisy it gets. One thing I want to point out is these drives, they really stick onto the table. So look, I'm gonna, applying some force and it's, it's very sticky. So these bottom things, they really hug. I guess it's to reduce the amount of vibration noise you typically get with a NAS drive. By my calculation, it sounds about the same as a MacBook Pro at half of its fan speed. So when it's around 4,000 RPM, that's around the noise levels you're getting, but ideally you want it to be a bit more further away from your system. All right, so you can see it's a pretty beastly machine, but what you also get is apps and lots of services that you can run once you have Wi-Fi connected. All right, just thought I'd show you some of the apps you can install on this QNAP device. You got a uh, Chrome for some reason, because <laughs> you can connect this QNAP to a HDMI, so you can watch it on your TV, so you can connect Chrome. You got uh, Facebook, Firefox, Google Cloud Storage. You've even got things like Mega, Upload, and uh, Plex, that's a favorite. You got Database, Postgre, SQL. You can even install Node.js. All different versions there and uh, own cloud that's a big provider photo station so you can view things like um, google photos on your uh, nas drive lots of different apps to use probably my favorite is hybrid backup sync and that will allow you to make a backup of everything that's on your nas or select drives to onedrive dropbox google drive my favorite app, of course, is the Cloud Backup application, and it's very useful. Now, what's cool about this Cloud Backup system is that you can compress and encrypt the files being uploaded to the cloud. The benefits of compressing it means that you upload it a lot faster, and the benefits of encrypting it is that if for some reason someone hacks into your Cloud Backup account, they can't out of the box see what your files are. They'll have to decrypt it first. And it uses open SSL decryption, so it should be possible for you to manually decrypt it. And it uses BZIP compression, so you should be able to manually uncompress it yourself. I'll be testing this in the follow-up video, of course. And I'll be doing some really cool stuff with Node.js, SSHing into the box, and as well trying to do some more processor intensive tasks. For example, FFmpeg, can we do that on this Pentium Gold processor? So stay tuned for that. Other cool things I loved about this NAS drive is the LCD display. This menu system is actually pretty cool. You can see the IP address of the Thunderbolt and any other connections. It tells you all the different IP addresses if you want to connect to the system manually, including Thunderbolt, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, all that kind of stuff. Also, when you plug it in into the file system, 
Mac OS Finder automatically lists all the different connection types. So the great thing about QNAP's system is it actually lists out the different connections. So this one's over Thunderbolt, and this one's over Wi-Fi. This one's using AFP, this is AFP Thunderbolt. Whereas uh, with my older NAS drive, it would just display one name. And you don't get this in other NAS drives. This is the only NAS drive I've seen that has these features. So that's pretty useful. Another cool feature is something called Q-Tier, which is similar to SSD caching in which you can combine different types of drives. For example, you can install an M.2 NVMe, combine it with a RAID, but in this case, instead of it just caching the data, it actually combines the drives into one big drive and it automatically puts your hot data, the data you use the most, on your NVMe. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And of course, let me know what NAS drive you have or what NAS drive you're planning to get. All right, it's time to get some Thunderbolt speed.